how close are Ozzy and Amar? Very close. Very, very close. Uh, it's probably within a week that they might be back. Uh, very, very happy about it. Um, and yeah, just uh, two important players in midfield that, that are going to strength that part of the team. Uh, anyone else available as well? Anyone else? Where are Eric Lopez? Lopez. And, and that would be it. I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, Aussie's been training normal since mm -hmm. probably a couple of weeks ago. It's more about the rhythm and the volume and making sure that every new effort he recovers well and his body adapts to new efforts in a progressive manner and safe manner. So it's, it's more about that, but he's been kind of clear from the medical side uh, a couple of weeks ago. All right, and build up. It seems like the opponents have been really kind of focusing in on cutting out the six, whoever that is, whether it's, it's not to whoever. Uh, what do y'all need to do better in build up to make things uh, easier to move the ball through the middle? Yes, uh, I think at times, you know, home versus away at home, I think we've been pretty good at in the build up away at times. It's a little bit of the, the opponent is a bit more aggressive in the pressing compared to at home, stuff like that. We talk about that, that in the film and bravery to get the balls in tough areas and progress the ball and be good at the fundamentals of the game. Uh, first touch, uh, passing forward, um, body position to, to receive and turn so we can progress the ball, you know, in a good manner. I think uh, those are things that we talk all, all, all day long. Uh, it's about, you know, I think home versus away has been a difference in terms of how we play and we don't want that. We want to be very similar when we play at home versus when we play away. Uh, it seems at times that there have been maybe chemistry issues with Derek and Tiago in particular. How do you kind of develop chemistry between two players like that? Does it just take time? I think it takes time. He's, he's playing. If you remember, Derek didn't didn't uh, do the precision. That That's a big part of the cohesion. That's where we, you really do the tactical drills and the movements and the cohesion probably starts there and then develop, is developed in the games. Um, unfortunately, and good for Caleb, we don't have Caleb at the moment who was having a probably a good momentum in that side and, you know, that established uh, triangle with uh, Andrew, Thiago and Caleb. Now it's Derek and it, it takes time, but I think at the same time, it, it's, you're just one piece of magic in one game and then you trigger that cohesion. Uh, it, the same thing happened with Caleb in that game in Charlotte where uh, Thiago is for him, he scored a goal and after that I think the cohesion started to pick it up. So patient on that, of course, you know, uh, we need more production on that side for sure, uh, but I think it's coming and I don't think it's anything that Derek is lacking something or he's not doing something right. It's just that chemistry needs to improve and that takes time. How have you felt about the team's organization uh, in their own penalty area when they're defending? Um, Ours? Yes. Oh. An organized state, anything like that. Um, I think pretty much okay. I think uh, when we're in the lower block, we were a little bit better. It's just a matter of are we aggressive enough to block the crosses and you know stop the shots? But the clearances inside the box were, were pretty okay, were pretty good actually. It was a very good game for in general for for the center backs and and a bit the back line. I think there were a couple mistakes that we did in how we were pressing in that middle areas in the in the pocket of space, and then we allow them to be very often open on the long switches, especially from their left to our from their left to their right and our right to our left. Um, and then we were a bit exposed with uh, Facundo Torres going every time uh, and at times even 2v1 against Andrew. So it was a busy day for Andrew. Uh, we watched the film, we assessed that. It's again, it's a team effort. It's about how we can protect a bit better Andrew, how we can block the, the long switches better, be more aggressive. So we talk about all that and I think uh, the team is, is positive about it. How did you feel about the team's press uh, on Saturday? It's been it's been a topic because for some reason uh, we haven't been pressing as effectively as at the beginning of the season, uh, and we want that to be part of our you know game model to press high to be aggressive. Uh, at times, his personnel you know um, the beginning of the season again, Caleb is very good at pressing. He was a right back, so he knows good skills on how to close down people, regain the ball. Um, 
but we we've been kind of missing a little bit of aggression in that part of the field. At times, it's also good tactics from the opponent. They have to give credit, for example, to Orlando. They did a very good game plan with Kyle uh, Smith playing as a center mid and then pushing Araujo almost as a ten, uh, allowing Facundo Torres to be one v one. I think they did they did good in their tactics. Uh, but regardless of how the opponent play, we need to find the triggers to press collectively and be aggressive. Once once one goes, everybody follows. And that's at times what we've been missing, that cohesion also in the pressing. The pairing on the middle has been changing a lot. So I think that also, because many times he's the center meets the one that see everything and they are the ones that dictate the pressure and they tell Thiago, Thiago jump and then I follow. And again, cohesion part, we've been rotating a lot in that part of the field. So all those are, I think, are reasons why we haven't been as effective. Uh, and we will keep working on that. I think it's, it's a matter of time until we put all those dots together and, and we have a complete game. You mentioned Facundo Torres in Orlando. It felt like at the beginning of the second half, he had some joy on that side. And then Andrew adjusted, I don't know if it came from you guys or not, to show him inside consistently into traffic. Is that something that you want to see in Oklahoma? Yes, we, we talk about certain opponents. And inverted wingers are difficult. I think uh, a few games ago, I remember Charlotte away uh, with uh, Josh Wiak that was playing on the left and his inverted winger, his tendency is to come inside and then Brooks did a great job at, at blocking actually the right foot and then forcing him outside and, and we did great on that. Facundo is different because he's probably a bit more skillful, he can go right or left even though his tendency is to come inside. Uh, I felt it was more about our organization in midfield to to track that Araujo run in between uh, uh, um, Andrew and Purata or, uh, you know, help more on the double team Facundo Torres so one close down the middle and then the other one force him outside and 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 you get a better hand on him so I think it was a difficult game for Andrew and a, a good challenge for us we watched the film again we assessed that we had individual film with with the defenders and and I think those are experiences that we have to learn from and then you know apply that in the future and I think uh, yeah Andrew Andrew it's been very good for us. I think he, he's going to be even better. But uh, we need to learn from those situations with, with the wingers that the opponent are putting in front of us. Different setup in this one, possibly, anyway. New England played two up top last time out. What challenge does that bring you? Well, yeah, they, they certainly have players to play uh, two forward system. Uh, Bobby Wood, this kid Brioni that is very good, obviously Altidore. Uh, Charles Hill is going to play on Benito's two, or is it going to be one forward, one ten in a more four two three one? Is that going to be a four diamond two um, with uh, you know Carlos Hill on beneath the two nines? I mean, who knows? They they have a good system to to a, a good roster to kind of even with the same lineup going to back five at times. You know, um, last last game Macoun was almost left back, center back on the left. I mean. You know, Boateng going back uh, with Jones on the other side. They can very easily go and transform the back line of four to back line of five, five two one two, five three two. I mean, who knows? Four two three one. I think has been the most consistent lineup for them. But um, Carlos Hill, of course, drives a lot of their attacking actions, um, and we just need to be aware of those situations. But I think again, the way we love to defend is with having the ball. So it's again the challenge of if we have more the ball than the opponent, you don't allow too many chances to Carlos Hill and the rest of talented players they have there to really create attacks, the better. So the farther away is Carlos Hill from our goal, the better. So if we pin them back in, in our final third or their final third and, and then you know they are 70 yards away from our goal, I think it's the best solution you can have. So hopefully we can have a lot of moments like that where we are dominating territorially and then we don't allow too many uh, attacking actions for them. That's the game we we are trying to, to get. But obviously the opponent will try to make it very difficult for us to have that type of game and that's a battle. Uh, but I hope my team can be dominant tomorrow. You were talking in Orlando about wanting to see more urgency and energy early. How important is that tomorrow? And really, how do you guys achieve that? Yes. Uh, of course, we want that since the very beginning. I think the last game around 60th minute, we start to see a little bit of that. And, and to clarify that, it's, it's, uh, it's urgency is not just the intensity. The intensity has been there. 
it's just I think at times we're not all connected or, or you know one guy is intense and the other is kind of resting a little bit it's about that urgency means everyone is on the same page if we're pressing we're pressing if we're in the attack everybody's playing and moving everybody's moving for each other creating space for others that sense of urgency of scoring goals I think is important um, and I think at home we've been much better compared to when we play away and that again is something that we are talking a lot with the players on why we change that much home versus away. It's normal that you change, you change a little bit, but why the difference has to be that big. Um, so uh, something to correct, but now we have a game at home and I hope and, and I feel like we're going to have that sense of urgency since the very beginning and I hope we can have a good game. When teams are making it difficult to build up, would you like to see the team uh, use GG more as a reference point, went direct to him? A couple of times and he was able to maybe flick it on. Uh, is that something you like to see a little more of in those kind of moments, or maybe not? It's it's not particularly my style to go direct all the time with the nine, and then it becomes all, almost as a second ball and and just a 50-50 ball. I don't like to gamble that way. I prefer to have full control of the ball, everything on the ground, play short passes, try to disrupt the opponent by good, you know, progressions, uh, but. It, it is, of course, as the opponents are make it, making it more difficult to us, maybe a good outlet can be GG, uh, not just in the air, but maybe to his chest and he shields the ball and maybe he waits for some movements from you know the guys on beneath him and then from there we can progress the ball for sure is, is one outlet or one variant that we can add. We've been talking about that multiple times, not just from the back, but even in the middle third, at times the opponents are kind of men marking our players in the pockets and then that opens the window for for Yakumakis and we haven't seen that a lot so we've been practicing a little bit messaging center backs at times once you break that passing lane through the middle to Yakumakis maybe the center mids close down a little bit more and then you can find the guys in the pocket so it's it's, it's a variant uh, in our game and of course Yaku's strength to shield the ball to receive under pressure and then from there play back and then sprinting behind is a good one so for sure we want to use that type of you know, um, yes, variance into our game. That's it. Thank you. Thank you.